Everybody, what's up and welcome back to CCLP4. We are here on level 71, Poof, or Poof. Um, I'm going to go with Poof, that sounds kind of cool. And uh, this level is really unique, I really like it a lot. It's a walker themed level, but unlike a lot of walker levels, the dodging in it is very close quarters. And frankly, I, I wasn't sure what to think of this when I first saw it. But now that I've played it a bunch, I really like it a lot, and for some reason my keystroke didn't take there. Alright, let's try that again. Yeah, I I like this idea a lot because you haven't you don't really see this very much in a lot of levels, and I just like the fact that uh, the designer, Rock Genery, uh thought that thought this through, you know, for a CC level. Because to me the I, I'll always take this kind of level any day over you know, some of the other stuff um, that's out there that's Walker-related. Because a lot of Walker stuff is just, you know, big rooms with a monster to dodge or something. You know, it's not... It's not anything inventive like this. So I really appreciate this level a lot. Really, really fun. All right, moving on to Sewerway, a level by Archie Pusaka. So this level is a little bit mean. You have to uh, keep in mind here that you're going to get flippers uh, at some point. And as such, you do not want to push that block below the water tile. So we're going to refrain from doing that and go this way instead. Um, and this needs to go over here. And I am uh, having a hard time pressing these keys tonight. I think I'm just still getting used to the keys on this keyboard. It's just weird to have an up and down arrow key that are smaller. Like, I don't know, it's just strange to me. I should have looked at that before I bought the machine, honestly, <laughs> considering how much I play this game. Okay. <clears throat> so, you'll hear about this when it happens in the, the video that I just recorded, but I just recorded a video for my Uru Let's Play, and uh, in it, I don't mean to get disgusting or anything here, but I had a bit of an incident <laughs> when it came to burping. Um, you, you don't hear it in the video, but I felt it in real life. Um, basically, what happened was that I had a... Um... Oh, wait, I wasn't supposed to push that up, was I? All right, we're, we're starting over. I don't know what it was I ate. Maybe it was just the blended coffee drink I had earlier in the day, but I had this burp. And you know how it is when you have certain burps where the stuff that comes up is like not just airy and stuff, but it feels like a bunch of acid is coming through your mouth? Like, that happened. And it's such an unpleasant feeling. I don't mean to be gross about this, but it's just... Ugh, I do not like it. Anyway, the, the taste, it, it felt like when it happened, the stuff kind of, I don't know if it actually literally did this, but it felt like my throat was being punctured in a way. I, I don't know of any better way to describe that sensation other than that, but that's what it felt like, and if it was acidic, that would certainly explain a lot. Okay, we were supposed to do that, and then use the uh, red lock here to get two more blocks. But yeah, if it was acid, that kind of makes sense, I guess. I don't know how that works, because it almost never happens to me. But I know that sometimes it happens if like, I drink milk or something like that. Alright, I'm going to build this way so I can use only three of the blocks and then get the flippers to get the key over here and then this last block. So the remain remainder of the way through is going to involve pushing blocks down this path here and using our flippers to take advantage of all the new space that we can get move around in. Like that. <clears throat> yeah, now my throat just feels really raw, and it's just, ugh. Not, not very pleasant. Not pleasant at all. And I got the, yeah, I got the key down there. Alright, so now we're down to these last few blocks here. We need at least one more, and I'm trying to remember where we get it. 
Oh no, we we do have all of them here. I wasn't counting the one I was pushing earlier. All right, we're all good to go here. So yeah, this level, I kind of wish this was in CCLP1, but uh, I'm glad it made it into this set. I understand why some people didn't like it for CCLP1, as far as the difficulty goes and the meanness of this part, but don't waste blocks, you will need all of them. I th I think it's a, it's a great level, I really like it. Now where's this last key, is it? Oh wait, we didn't go down this path, did we? There you go. Okay. Another level down. Moving onward to sealed doors in the spacecraft. Find a way through the sealed doors and gain control of your spacecraft. I kind of, see, I don't know, I wish there was a little more to the hint than this, that. I mean, we know there's sealed doors and we know there's a spacecraft, so. Alright, so this section is really cool. Um, you don't want to push that through because as you see there, the block's just going to go around and cover up that key. So you don't want to do that. So instead you want to approach it from the other side. Alright, so then we'll do that. Now the block is just going to be trapped there like that. So that's pretty neat. And the next time we go around will have to be the last time. I think if we do that, yeah, there we go. Now that one's going to be the one going around. Alright, so now that's there. So now what we have to do is we have to go and push, I believe, push the blocks through and create a partial post. I'm trying to remember how to do that with this. Oh wait, there's one down there. That's what. That's the way you do it. I was say, I'm trying to remember how to do that with that other block, but you don't use the other block. Which is a relief. So yeah, this is a level by Josh Lee. And... Um, I think it's pretty neat. It's not my favorite, but I, I think it's a cool concept, and I love the condensed puzzle of it. Alright, Technopathic. Level 74. So we cannot break through that pattern of monsters. We can go through the teleport one of two ways. So let's go... Um, let's go this way first. Alright, so we're going to need to push three more? Yeah, three more blocks into the bombs. Can we get three more? Yes, we can. You just have to watch out for this ball here. So this is a level by Mr. Tyler Sontag. A really fun level. With a lot of variety and a lot of monster dodging. I think it was meant to be used as a tribute to Tyler's original level set called TCCLP. And I almost got died right there by that ball. So a lot of the levels in that set were like this, where there's... A lot of funny monster patterns and chip collecting and stuff, and mechanisms that involve recessed walls. Although, okay, Tyler still makes levels that are like that. Oh, need to do that. There we go. All right, so now we got to get the teeth over here because, as you can see over this way, there's a series of tanks to get through. Don't even need the recessed wall there. All right, so now we go through this. There's a blue door there, but we don't have a blue key. All right, we can go through this way though, and there is a blue key right there, so that's good. So we just have to slip through all the monsters. All right, that's not so hard. And we get back here. Alright, so now let's take the other path. I like the fact that you can do these in whatever order you want. That's a neat... Uh, I like it when levels are non-linear in general. Alright, so this... Oh, this forces the glider over here, huh? Alright, so we cannot go back that way, so we're going to have to go this way now. <clears throat> And where does this go? This... Oh, this bridge is back down here. Perfect. 
All right, so now we can naturally go through this yellow door. Good. All right, we're on our way forward here. Okay, not that way. We need to go there. All right, so the ball is stuck, and life is good. Oh, we need to get... Oh, okay, I see what you're doing there. Got to go there first <clears throat> before we can move on. All right. So now we've got another set of balls there. A bomb to blow up. And more monsters as part of the central machine here to go through. All right. Just got to get through that. And there we go. We're now in the exit area. Oh, I didn't show it earlier, but that was an invisible wall right above us there, in case you were wondering. All right, so moving onward to Unmitigated Hint Factory Disaster by Jeffrey Barden. Don't push blocks onto hints. Um, so this is something that you can't do in links, but it's sage advice, even, uh, especially for MS. So it's a little more applicable to our situation right now. But one thing that's really interesting about this maze level is that it doesn't actually take up the entire map, gameplay-wise, but the entire map is filled. And this is something that Jeffrey does a lot, and I've noticed in his levels. He fills up the whole map with stuff to make the levels look bigger than they actually are. And I think that's a cool concept. I really like the idea of doing that. I wish more designers actually did that. And let me put that there so we can swing back around here. All right, where to go next? So let's go up here first. Trying to make sure I'm being thorough. One thing that this, the outside area kind of makes this a little more challenging, one way that that happens is that you don't really quite know what ships not to get. Although you can kind of tell that there's this straight barrier here. I kind of wish the barrier was a little less predictable, but I do appreciate that that ex exists. All right, we're getting close to the end, it seems like. We need to push that block into place there. There we are. Okay, do we have to go around? I think we're going to have to go around again. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Five ships to go. See, after a while, you can kind of tell where the barrier is. Uh, where is the... Where's the way forward? Oh, here. There you go. We forgot to get those two earlier. And that one. Oh, I see. We have to push that block all the way in there. Okay. Well, at least now we know where we're, where we're heading with this. I forgot about that block. Okay, there we are. So now, let's go around and do this whole thing all over again. I can't remember. Yeah, here we go. Alright, so where's this block? Try to remember where this block is. It's somewhere over here. Oh, here it is, right here. And I think we're going to have to approach it, yeah, from the bottom. There we go. All right, that was fun. Really fun level. I like how it's scaled. It's it's a maze that doesn't take up the whole map. And that I really appreciate a lot. Okay, another lef level by Jeffrey here, Flow State. This is a really inventive concept. You basically have to control the amount of fireballs that f come through on that cloner there as you advance further. So right now, in order to progress, we need a green key. So let's take a look and see if we can find that. There it is. So we can get a red key here, but that's it, because the fireballs are blocking the way. But if we remove this door, we can limit the amount that are, is cloned to just the ones that are being cloned by that ball, which gives us one more red key. All right, so now we got to figure out what to do next. What will help us the most in this case? Um, well, we can't really go through there. So 
So I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go through the uh, toggle wall thing here. So let's do that. Hopefully that was the correct choice. Okay, it was. And we cannot, yeah, we cannot get that. Okay, so now where to next? We can now go into here with some bugs. That's a little nerve-wracking, but we made it. And we can switch the tanks as well, which I think was the next step over here. I'm not sure what the purpose of those tank cloners there is. Okay, so now we have both a blue key and a red key. So let's go through here. There, you can go through either one of these. Both of them functionally do the same things. They will clone fireballs that uh, shorten the length of that ball's pattern, which in turn uh, lengthens the amount of time a button press takes. Alright, I'm not sure where to go next. Did we miss something here? We did. We need to get that key. There we go. Let's do the other one next. This is a really clever idea. I like how it's enforced with the fireballs and those specific intervals there. Alright, so now we can effectively get the rest of these and not be blocked anymore by fireballs, except for these ones, I guess. And that should enable us to go in here and grab suction boots. What are we missing chip-wise? Oh, the rest of them are in there. Yeah, we definitely need to go through here. Alright, so we can go through that. And in turn, we can go out this way. So that's cool. We can get that. And then this enables us to open this up and go through here and then get inside the suction area over this. I pressed that a little too quickly. My bad. Okay, well at least we know how to solve it, so let's go and complete the level again. I do love this concept a lot. It's such a neat idea. Okay, so this was the one where we go through here, right? I believe so. There we are. Go through this door. And wait for the bugs. There we are. Alright, so far so good. Alright, so this is the first of the fireball blockers here. Oh man, see that's what happens when you're in such a hurry. I, I shouldn't have done that. I knew I shouldn't have done that, but it was one of those things where, you know, it's just too late by the time you realize your mistake, you know. I hate it when that happens. Okay, try again here. I'll probably have the level optimized by the time we're done, right? Mm. Alright, see, the more I do this, like, the more I practice using this keyboard, I think the better off I'll be. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now we can get that one red key that enables us to use the first fireball here. You know what? I'm going to go down here instead. Let's see how this goes. Alright, we didn't have to wait for that one. Okay. Probably could have made that. Oh well. Okay. Wait for that one. There we are. And we can safely get that. Okay, I didn't want to risk that. Okay, grab that, go through here, grab that, and go through here. And we waited for the bugs. Mm -hmm. Alright. Oh, whoops. We don't have a key. That's problematic. 
We need to open up the toggle doors again. There we go. Okay. Close these again. Alright, so now we can take a shortcut back through there. And go back there. Alright, so now we got flippers, which we should be able to use to get to the exit. There we are. Really, really cool level. I, I really like it a lot. It, it kind of took a while for it to grow on me originally, but I like it. It's a neat idea. Alright, so moving on to a level that some longtime viewers might recognize. Brick Block Facility, a Josh level that was in Josh L5. So this level was really neat. It's got this checkerboard aesthetic with the blocks and the recessed walls. Some items are under blocks. Use recessed walls whenever necessary. And what's really neat about this is that you kind of have to gauge what's useful recessed wall-wise. Because some of these things are impassable as far as uh, blocks and whatnot that you can get through. But the way it works and comes together is so cool. It's just, it's really neat. Um... Try to remember how you do this part. Oh, there we go. That's right. You have to do this, and then... Uh... Oh, just do that. <laughs> oh. I'm guessing I should have done that instead of coming in from the top. Okay. My bad. Let's not do that again. And I wish it wasn't that strict, but it's okay. Pretty early in the level, so. Alright, there we are. So now we can get here into this trap and get another blue key, it seems like. And we're going to need a green key if we're going to get to those flippers. So we can open both of those. And it looks like we've got a whole string of bombs to destroy here. So let's do that. And you, let's see there, and a green key. I'm not using uh, blocks in the water because I know I'm going to be getting flippers, so I figure the bombs are the thing that ball, uh, blocks only can get through, So unless there's monsters, and we haven't seen any evidence of those so far. There's also an extra block you can get out of that, but I'm not going to use that. At least there is an extra one. All right, we have to remember there is a red key there. That's going to be important later on, so just remember that one. All right, so from here, let's see what we've got. We got a bunch of bombs to destroy. Six bombs, to be exact. And most of the stuff in this room is fairly straightforward. And we got a red key. We're going to need a few red keys, judging from that next section down there. Uh, did we miss a block? Oh no, that is the last one. Okay, never mind. Alright, so there's the second red key, and now we can get through here. Alright, so now we've got this section. Do that. <clears throat> so we need to use two blocks here. That's simple enough. Alright, and this looks a little bit intimidating, but it's actually not that bad. Um, all you really need to do is just make sure you've got a block positioned over here to get the fire boots. And you actually don't even need the fire boots, it turns out. There's a bit of a bust in this level. Where you can actually get into this area without even using them. Despite the fact that there is a... A fire... Wait a minute. Was it fire boots you didn't need, or... Yeah, it was fire boots you didn't need. You can just... I think what you can do is you could do something like going through here and then coming up there. In fact, we can do it right now. You can do that. Not even have to worry about using the fire boots. Alright, and that should get us to the exit. There we go. <laughs> Almost went the wrong way. And we completed the level, which was a lot of fun. Really inventive level, really neat solution. A few mean spots, but nothing really major, so... Alright, Aquatic Ruins. This is a level by Jeffrey, and one I really like a lot. 
Once you finish exploring the ruins, use the blocks of the room below to reach the exit. All right, I'm taking a swig of my water again because my throat is feeling cracked again. All right, so the premise of this level was really interesting. You have to use blue keys to get around and hopefully not waste any. And the thing is, is that you actually get extras here. Uh, the level is not very strict at all about this. Um, and you have to kind of decide which keys are worth it if you're optimizing. So I, I, like, I like that element of this a lot. Um, let's see, let's go this way. I'm going to do the same general approach again here. We'll just pick up what we find and we'll... There we go. Forgot to step off at the right time there. Stepping off at the right time is one of the challenges of this level, but it's pretty reasonable as far as that goes. It doesn't involve any, or require, I should say, any really mean sidesteps. Alright, so we got a dirt maze here. One thing I also really like about this level is that the whole thing has very distinct sections from an aesthetic standpoint. And that, in my opinion, is really neat. I like that idea a lot. <clears throat> Alright, so now we're in this blue door maze here. That looks like a, a place that can open up some paths for us there. And that we definitely need to do. There's no way around it. Alright, so now we're back to this gravel and water section here in the lower left. So let's get two more keys. At least we can end this section with a net gain. And we still got 34 chips left to find, so we got a, an area that must be concentrated with quite a few. We can see a little bit of that from here, actually. Uh, let's see, I might as well just go back through here, grab that, and we can grab another key. I do appreciate how the level makes you feel like you're making some progress with the keys by uh, giving you more. Oh, here we go, we got a bunch in this room here with the blocks. All right, so I'm going to use that one block there, so that leaves us with two to get to the exit, and that should be enough. Okay, so here we have a whole room here of stuff we haven't done yet. So we need to use that block up there to get through. All right, so let's, first of all, let's get all these here, because there's a whole treasure trove of keys. Whoops, I did not mean to use one there. And now we can cross back this way and get everything here. Oop, get, that, get that key just in case. Alright, I don't know where this last chip is. I'm trying to remember where we haven't really explored very thoroughly yet. Might as well go ahead and do that. Hmm. Is there any... Oh, up here. Okay. Forgot about that. Oh, man. We were about to run out there. All right, so let's go here and push that up there. And then we'll take this guy and we'll push him the same way. This level was actually originally busted. There was a way you can do this early without having to get all the chips. I kind of wish that made it into the set, but I like the, the solution of the intended route. So, Moving on to level 79, Spring. This is a Tyler Sontag joint. And a pretty interesting level that uses thin walls uh, to interesting effect. I really like the look of it and the feel of it a lot. I think one thing that's that stands out about this is that a lot of thin wall levels um, use the thin walls mainly for mazes and whatnot, whereas this one builds an entire set of puzzles around them, and I like that a lot. I think that's really interesting. So let's see if we're going to have to create some nails there if we're going to make it through that. So let's go ahead and get it done. There's actually an extra block in this section, so that's kind of nice. If, you're, if you play your cards right, you can do that and bypass the first uh, nail. This one, though, you cannot bypass because you need this yellow key to 
access the other blocks. So. Although, wait a minute. We're using all of them. Okay, so obviously I didn't do that right. How do you... Okay, never mind. There must be a way around that, but I, I forgot. Oh, well. Let's move it down here. I guess... Oh, yeah, I guess you could wait to get the suction boots until... Yeah. Can you? I forget. Anyway, it's not important right now. All right, so we have another one of these monster things here. Let me use it to get to a green button, which enables us to go toward that path on the left side of the force floors. So let's do that. Oh, boy. Cover the brown buttons before you collect the fire boots. Good to know. All right, didn't say anything about these chips, so let's take care of those. Right. Ah, here we go. All right, so this is a Sokoban. All right, I think I see how you do it. You have to get this into place, but then get that so then you don't have to use the loop up here. I see you there. There we go. And now we get here to the fire boot necessity thing. Uh necessitating thing. So let's do that real quick. Alright, so now we're, we can just slide on the slide, which is cool. Alright, I think we need to go down this way. And then we can swing around. Wait, how do you get down there? Oh, you go through here, right. And now we can grab this. Alright, once we hit that dirt tile, the fireball is going to chase us, so... See uh, what happens here. Run! Okay, it's going to go into the bomb. Good deal. Not my favorite level, but I do like the, um, the idea of using thin walls like that. So, I, I, I really like it a lot. It's, it's, it's a neat level. This level, though, is definitely one of my favorites in the set. Monster Swapper is a really cool level. It's from Pit of 100 Tiles, which I LP'd before. And in this level, you have to decide what's appropriate to do between these rooms um, of varying monster types. For, for, for instance, here, I cannot get that ship because of the fireball. But I can get to these because the bugs are going to um, stay where they are. So that's nice. I cannot, however, get the chips over there. Because the bugs would follow me in there. So that's not going to work out. Alright, so those I cannot get thanks to the balls. This one, I definitely cannot get that because of the bug. And I'm going to need a red key before I can get into that room. So, Alright, let's go to the other side. we got tanks over here, so that's definitely doable as far as getting through that. And a paramecia, that we can use to get, uh, we can definitely hide in there with the paramecia going through. Alright, do we want to go through that yellow door? Not with tanks involved, the, the balls can work out though. Alright, the glider, we can, we can definitely change the course of the glider, so that's good. That works out nicely. And these guys, we do not want to go into those inner areas. But the outer area over here is totally doable. Alright, so now we got a red key. So let's go up to the red door over here. Alright, so if we're going to get another red key, I'm going to need to make sure we hit that uh, glider cloner on the right there. Also gives us a chip, too. There we are. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, seven chips to go, and we're almost done. So now we can get in here, to this side. And we're going to need to use the cloner on the left. These are fireballs. To do that. 
I guess if you went here first with the red key, then you wouldn't be able to actually go to the other room, so good thing we did the other room first. Not sure how much I like that, but can you actually see that you... Yeah, you can. You can see it from here, so that, that's not really unfair. Alright, and last but not least, we will do this ball area here. Alright, so that is all for Monster Swapper. Definitely one of my favorites in the set. Really, really nice uh, design and a really cool concept. Well, that is all for this decade of levels. Next time, we're going to start with Estranged for a Season. But until then, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves today. And either way, I will catch you on the flip side.